Over 80 fires are now burning up large parts of New South Wales as some people flee their homes while others have been told it's too late to leave. 11 of those fires have been classified as emergency level and 150 homes have already been lost. Two public schools have been destroyed and a Polytech employee is among the four people who have died in the fires. About 600 schools, 21 Polytechs and several university campuses are closed. Tempers have also fled on the northern coast as politicians visit to speak to locals. Federal opposition leader Anthony Albanese and Labour state MP Janelle Safin were promising to petition Parliament for more resources as Nimbin resident Ginger O'Brien let loose. Shame on you! Your house is not burning! My house is burning down! What are you doing? Nothing! You're laughing! You're hugging it so It's going to burn that too. What are you doing? It's going to burn fire. There's no money for the firefighters. Get more money for it. Oh, my friends are out there. My whole life is out there. And much of Greater Sydney plus Shoalhaven to the south and the Hunter region to the north are on a severe weather warning as damaging winds are about to pick up. I'm joined now by Josh Dye from the Sydney Morning Herald. Josh, can you bring us up to date with how the day has unfolded over there? Yeah, Lisa, good to be with you. Um, it's, the day started out very calm. Um, it was not pretty cool this morning, um, but very, very smoky, hazardous air quality. Uh, but throughout the day, the winds have really picked up. Uh, after lunch time, we saw really strong winds from the west, uh, and we've seen gusts up to 70 kilometres an hour, and that's expected to continue for the next three or so, two or three hours. Um, and around 7 o'clock local time here, um, we're expecting uh, quite a strong southerly change to come through, um, and that will bring some relief in terms of the temperatures um, and the, in terms of the fire, it actually brings more danger because um, there's potential for the fire to spread um, in a different direction to what firefighters had been uh, working to control. So we're still in a precarious situation. There's, there's about 6 million people from, from the uh, Illawarra in the south uh, through Sydney and up to the Hunter around Newcastle in the, in the north that are in that catastrophic um, area, which is the worst fire rating. Uh, so there's still many hours this evening uh, to get through before uh, before the danger's passed. Josh, you mentioned air quality and, and the kind of haze. Can you just describe to us what it sort of smells like and what it's like outside there at the moment? Yeah, uh, it smells like smoke. So it's, uh, there's not much more to it than that. It's just very dense. Um, uh, we left our windows open last night and uh, woke up to a very sort of heavy smell in here. Um, there's, I think, the New South Wales Ambulance Service uh, said there was uh, dozens, uh, around 35, I think, um, people that had been affected. That was up to about midday um, with you know, asthma and that kind of thing that call out to paramedics. Um, so there's a, there's a real uh, risk of being outdoors if, if you're vulnerable to you know, air, uh, air problems with asthma and, and elderly people, that kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, the air is pretty bad, but it's even worse, obviously, in those regions up further up north where there's those 10 emergency fire warnings uh, where, in many cases, people have been told it's too late to leave and they... Uh, if they haven't already left, they have to just seek shelter and, and really hope for the best. That is an absolutely terrifying prospect. The other thing I'm interested in is these 100,000 houses that I understand um, are on the outskirts of Sydney but are near Bush and apparently under threat. What can you tell us about the situation there? Yeah, that was um, the um, uh, analysis that we got one of our reporters uh, today, so for those of your listeners who are familiar with Sydney, it's a very uh, hilly area and and very bushy as well. There's areas in the in the south and the north and the west of the city that uh, you know back onto vast areas of bushland and 
and also in many cases quite steep areas too. So the risk there is that um, for, for these 100,000 homes, which are within 100 metres of bushland, uh, obviously, you know, embers can spot ahead of the fire and, and they sort of race up the hill. So there's, uh, yeah, it, it, it really is a critical risk um, if any if any fires do break out in the city, uh, in, the, in the greater Sydney region. Um, thankfully, we have yet to see any. Um, there was one in the in the west in Penrith uh, a little while ago, but that's been brought under control. But, um, yeah, at the moment, the, the major risk um, uh, is the fires in the, in the more northern parts of the state around Coffs Harbour, Port Macquarie, Kempsey, um, some of those areas uh, on the coast and also inland where there's lots of forests. Uh, we've seen, yeah, we've seen lives lost last week, um, houses, houses lost, um, the koala population has been significantly impacted as well. So there's a whole range of, um, of impacts. The, the main uh, freeway, the motorway from Sydney to Brisbane has been cut off at various points throughout the, the past few days, so that impacts on that in other ways too. So, yeah, it's a really um, traumatic time for a lot of people and... Um, yeah, it's uh, still got a little little bit to play out just yet. Thank you for joining us. That is Josh Dye from the Sydney Morning Herald there updating us on the situation with the fires in Australia. And as Josh was saying, it's a critical few hours to come.